whenever anyone asks me if they should travel, I just say yes, do it. Don't look back. <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> So traveling tech, right? Traveling yeah. tech? Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's something that I've always had in the back of my mind. When I first started in radiology, I always knew about it. And I kind of thought that someday I would do it. And then all of a sudden we were doing it. And yeah. we just don't see an end in sight, honestly. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Good but I know a lot of people in the profession don't realize that it's something they can do. Correct. Um, and some people try it for a little bit, save some money. Um, and some people are, are, are like me and my husband are just like started it and fell in love with it and mm -hmm. can't see doing radiology any other way. Wow. So did both of you start at the same time? Like, did you both decide to travel? We did. We actually, we met in the hospital. We were um, both trained at in Arizona. Okay. Met there and then decided to just kind of move around every couple of years, not as travelers. We just thought like, Hey, let's go live in Seattle now for a couple of years. And then we went back home and we just got this bug. We're like, let's try and move to Hawaii. So we got our Hawaii licenses, applied for full-time jobs. And the manager of the cath lab and I are, which was, is what my husband does. Cool. He was like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. That's a big move before you move all your stuff down here. Why don't you try it as a travel contract? Okay. So we did that and we were like, oh, we're only going to travel from now on. This is great. Wow. So, yeah. so I, Hawaii is one of the, like on the bucket list kind of deal? Was that one of the... Um, so we did Hawaii wow. and then we went from there to San Francisco wow. and a lot around California, a lot around the West Coast, but we've kind of branched out. We've gone to the East Coast a little bit. Um, we would like to do a lot more. I know the environment right now is not great for traveling given right. the virus and everything that's going on. But yeah, I mean, we would like to continue to try and hit as many states as we can. So California, California is very interesting. Uh, um, I know every state has different regulations. How do you get that kind of information? Like, <sighs> There is, California is one of the difficult ones. Okay. So some are really easy. My home state, Arizona, um, I believe it's $60. You send your check in and two weeks later you have your state license. Wow. Uh, okay. California, you have to take a whole nother test, um, okay. a fluoroscopy test, okay. which uh, you, there's study material out there. Um, I believe the radiation board, if you go on there, has the study information. Okay. So you can get that, take it, and then you'll be you can get your California, they have the state license and the floral license. Wow. So most places will not let you work unless you have both. Okay. But if you go to, I believe it's ASRT.org, they have a list of every state and what is required. Okay. So that's yeah. a great source. It to, is. To yeah. use. Okay. And some of them are harder than others. Um, right. Texas being one. Yes. Yes. I'm from yeah. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Texas, it's funny because there is a strict end, like for the RTs. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, like, there's a, a loose end to like NCT, which is the non-certified text, but Texas is kind of swaying from the NCT and now they want, they're, they're pushing more of the, the licensed text, um, because, um, the whole grandfathered in kind of deal. So I think uh, the state altogether, um, is making changes towards like now needing, uh, or wanting licensed, uh, professionals. So we do go through a, a state license. And a few years ago, they just passed that um, every 10 years, um, you know, they, they require another kind of exam. So okay. it, it's strict and kind of getting stricter. There's, there's constant changes. So yeah, kind of stay on top of it. Yeah, there always are. Um, right now we're in Nevada and for the longest time, they didn't require a state license. As long as you had your ART, you were fine to come work. Um, just as of January this year, this is our first time in Nevada, they required a license. So we came in and we were immediately told, like, you have to shell out quite a bit of money <laughs> to get wow. this new license. Man, and but, those licenses cost money. 
Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they cost money. They and then you have to renew them, and there's dates. I was gonna say, and when you they start adding up, and when you have to renew them every year or every two years. You no know, continued education, right? I'm, I'm sure these states require. Yes. That. Yes, yeah. most of them um, do. Do you see a difference in states? Like, do other states require more or less? Um, it's pretty much the same. They, some require more, some require less. Like, um, some of them don't require CEUs. Okay. Uh, California and I know Florida require C specific CEUs. So I always keep our California going just because it was one of the harder ones to get. Right. So I will, as much as I want to do fun CEUs that I find interesting, I always just do the ones that California recommends because I don't want to lose that license. Right, that's a great idea. And I believe Florida has their own as well and I think Washington, but I'm not sure. Okay. And it's not specific to the state, it's just, I think California wants you to do specific um, radiation physics and protection, I believe. And then one other one. And, and is there a preference that like how you like to do your CEUs? I know there's seminars, there's webinars, there's podcasts, like there's a lot of options. Um, the, the articles, like the magazines, that's another option. Yes, for a long time I did ASRT. And then when it started, when I got California, it started getting specific. I just okay. go to um, Gage. Okay. And they, they are really good about, um, tell, like you type in, I need California they will give you a whole packet of what California requires. So that's kind of a non-brainer for, for those. Before the, the COVID, um, what did you see a demand in those states? As far as hospital, like as far as positions or as far as hospitals? I guess like the, the hospitals. I know here, like <clears throat> in the lower South Texas, um, we have uh, winter Texans. So we get a lot of people from upstate coming down okay. in the winter time. So we get really like, um, there's a big difference in the winter and the summer. Like once the winter okay. taxes go back up, you know, a lot of facilities, they're not as busy, you know, it starts to slow down a little bit. Um, you could tell when the, when winter Texans are here, it's just- uh, When the season hits. Yeah. I, um, I do know for Arizona, summertime is the slow time. Okay. No one wants to be there in that heat. So it, it does slow down. And when we were working full time there, it was very common to get flexed during okay. that time. Um, I do know of some places that hire during the summer because that's their busy time. I know um, my friend has done this, con two of my friends have done this contract a few times over in Cape Cod. That's their busy season. So a lot of people spend the summer in Cape Cod traveling. That's true. Wow. So that's a yeah. kind of like a win-win situation. Right yeah. There. <laughs> Is there like, you know, a certain amount? Is it like, okay, you'll be, you're you going to be here for a year or a couple of months? How, how does that uh, for when we first started, we really got addicted to the traveling. So we, okay. if we spent like a contract is usually 12 to 13 weeks, about three months. Okay. Um, we would do our three months and then out because we wanted to move on and see the next place. Sure. Uh, we, like fun. Yeah. We've slowed down a little bit now. We're doing like six months, nine months here and there just to you know, slow down, see the sights, actually feel like we were there because three months goes by fast. Yeah, I can imagine three months, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know all the very specific tax laws, but there is that, not necessarily a rumor, but if you stay anywhere for a year, okay. then that location becomes your tax home. Mm. And as a traveler, you get, tax-free housing and per diems because you're traveling away from your home. True. So we don't want to lose those tax incentives. So we've never stayed anywhere over a year. Right. Um, I've heard of people leaving for 30 days and then coming back to that assignment and they're right. in the clear. Again, I don't know all the tax laws around that and we've right. never actually left for 30 days and then come back. So I'm not sure how it actually works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when it comes to taxes, I mean, you're talking about stacks of papers and yes. loopholes and this. And so, yeah, I don't think anybody really knows taxes 100 percent. But yeah, I mean, that that's smart. That that is uh, you're, you're traveling, you're meeting people, you're seeing places and you're doing what you enjoy doing. Like it's that sounds like a dream come true, you know, and yeah, it's your been great. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. 
nice that I have a partner to do this with. And um, sometimes, you know, if we really want to go somewhere, like when we went to Hawaii, there was nothing for CT. So he just took the contract and I hung out on the beach, cool. which was pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> I can't complain. Um, or sometimes I'll take the contract and he'll stay him home. We did Rhode Island and he grew up playing hockey as a kid. So he stayed home and just played lunchtime hockey every day in Rhode Island. And so it gives us that break and, you know, it, it does give us the time since we're not employed by an employer right. or just on assignment. If we want to take, if he wants to take that three months off or if we want to take a month off together, there's no one to say you can't do that because right. when we're not on contract, we're not employed. Man. So, yeah. so financial freedom kind of deal, yeah. right? You if you're smart enough and save up enough money, that's the hard part. That's the hard part. Yeah. Um, I mean, any advice to anybody who's maybe interested in, in, in traveling or maybe hesitant, right? Because, you know, to some it's like, I love the idea, but um, you know, maybe just a little hesitant for whatever reason. I understand being hesitant. It is scary. I mean, you're basically starting all over. It doesn't matter how many years of experience that you have, True. you're going in there new. Right. So new protocols, new doctors, new staff. But at the same time, you're going in there new. Like you right. said earlier, um, there's always something to be learned from talking tech to tech. Um, yeah, I feel like I learned something at every assignment. You meet a ton of new people. Mm. Um, you're seeing a new environment. So yes, you are working, but you also get to support the vacation part of it too. So on the weekends, right. you can go out and explore that area and have fun. I, Whenever anyone asks me if they should travel, I just say, yes, do it. Don't look back. <laughs> the more the merrier. Right. You can do it a few different ways. When we first started traveling, your recruiter and your company, they can find the housing for you. Wow. They that can all be taken care of, which when you first start is amazing because it's pretty overwhelming. Right. You're moving to a new area. If you just have a house to walk into or an apartment or whatever they set up for you, that's great. Yeah. Um, but you're leaving money on the table. True. So when they give you, you've accepted the job, they give you what they call the pay package mm -hmm. that they'll tell you how much is allotted for your housing. So we'll usually take that amount and then research the area and find our own housing and try and get it a few hundred dollars under what they're offering us. Yeah. So then we can just pocket that extra hundred dollars and that goes into savings or vacation fund. Wow. Um, I do have, and we did this for a little while too. Um, a good friend of mine is full-time in a fifth wheel. Okay. And we did a class A RV for a long time. That's also another way to do it. Yeah. It usually saves you money. Um, it can be tricky. Like if you're on call, I know for CT, I don't take call, but my husband being Kath, he does. Right. So you have to find an RV park within 30 minutes. One that feels safe because not all of them are great. That's true. That is true. And you have you have to be brave enough to either drive or pull the the rig. No, that's another part. Yeah. Yeah. For us, that's the best way. We're um we sold our class A and we're currently rebuilding a vintage airstream. So hopefully within the next year we'll be living out of that again and less uh renting of Airbnbs or other people's homes. Right. And 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 that's interesting. Airbnb, you know, that's something like um very new like like i know it's been around but it's still fairly new you know like it is, uh, yeah you have the traditional oh, i'll just get a hotel but really no airbnb has really changed the game as far as traveling and and how you stay and how you feel comfortable you know adjusting right i'm pretty sure you have to be very good at adjusting new site yeah. new people you know um so what can you what, what kind of advice can you give on that part um, the biggest piece of advice I can give is just to say, just absorb everything. I know, say you've been at a tech for, for 10 years and you go into somewhere and they're explaining to you how to do a basic chest x-ray. Right. You've done it a million times, sure. but I don't jump in and say, I know how to do this, or this is how I did it at this facility. No one wants to hear about that other facility. You're at this new facility now. Just sit there, absorb what they have to say. Maybe they're going to show you something 
right. a trick that makes it easier or a certain way a specific doctor likes to do it. Right. Just absorb everything that they have to say, even if it's just like how to fold a piece of paper the correct way or something stupid and minute. You just, no one wants to hear, I already know how to do that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And then when you do have a question or you do need something, um, you know, you're open to it and, and, you know, and they're more understanding, right? In in general, I think radiology, you got to have that. I think you just got to be able to adapt quickly. Would you agree on that part? Yes, I was going to say, I mean, just radiology in general, whether you're cross training or you're just starting a new full-time job or someone new is coming in, just being, being able to adapt really and yeah, there's a lot of different situations thrown at you in all across radiology. Um, personally, I, I, that's one thing that I enjoy is those challenges. The, the, the fact that it's not the same thing, it's not, it doesn't get boring. Um, so to add traveling on top of that is going, you're keeping the spark of something new going and, and new adventures, yeah. basically. I, I'm hoping that it's keeping my brain relatively young. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, Texas, is Texas anywhere in, in your plans? Oh, we've tried to get that license a couple times. Um, we did not start to, we did not try and start to get that license until we were about four years into traveling. Okay. And they want the most recent, a letter of recommendation, I believe, okay. but it's on their form, correct? An L form or something. Yeah. Then yeah. it's been a little while since I've tried to get a license there yeah. um, from every hospital that you worked at for the past five years. And at the time, that was over 11 for us. Man, so imagine that. So, yeah. But I, we've slowed down our traveling now the past few years. So I thought maybe next year we would try it when we don't have 11 hospitals on our list. True, true, true. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll try again because Texas is one we've really been wanting to get to. I'm, my sister's a nurse and she traveled for a long time. And she did a lot in Texas and absolutely loved it. So uh, is there maybe a specific area in Texas? Texas is pretty big, right? Um, I would like to do San Antonio and Austin. Yeah. Um, honestly, really anywhere. I think some of our most fun travels have been to places that we were, it, it was just offered to us. And we're like, why not? We never thought of going there, but sure. Yeah. 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 San Antonio is one of my more, uh, like, I love it because it's a big city, but it's not, the biggest and busiest city mm-hmm. like Houston I mean it's gonna take a little while to get around with traffic and things like that yeah um, but San Antonio just kind of it's just perfect it, it's that big city feel but yet Small you feel town, like yeah so uh how are you doing with everything with the COVID and everything like that? um so far so good um family is all in Arizona they're safe at home um I work, of course, I worry about my mom. She's also in the healthcare field. So, right. but you know, everyone's doing what they can being, being smart with the PPE that they have and, you know, just taking it day by day. Cause I'm, as I sure you, as I'm sure, you know, you go into work and everything can be different oh, yeah. from one day to the next or even a couple hours. Yeah. I think, I think the, most of the changes come around like three o'clock, four o'clock, like, on a daily mm-hmm. basis. So it's like, I took the time and just, you know, uh, you just gotta keep your ears open to, you know, what's gonna change today, what's gonna change tomorrow. A lot of things that people are asked to do are things that we already been doing as healthcare professionals, like, you know, uh, standard precautions and things like that. Um, so what advice would you give to, you know, the public as far as um, staying safe at a time like this? Um, My biggest thing is do not go out unless you absolutely have to. Um, I just, what everyone else is saying, wash your hands a lot. Um, Always a hard one. Don't touch your face. I know, (laughs) I know those ones are, it's what everyone is saying, but I feel like that's the biggest thing that you can do. Um, The gloves, I, I just feel like they're causing more problems than they're helping. Yes. Um, if, yeah, I feel like if you're touching, if you're out in the grocery store, touching your shopping cart and then pulling out your wallet and rumma- rummaging through your wallet, then it's not really doing anything. I, I would just, you know, bare hands. If you have sanitizer, immediately sanitize your hands when you get in the car or wash your hands when you get home. 
Yeah, you know, absolutely. I, I agree. The gloves, I think they're getting misused. I mean, there's a reason why they're disposable. And, and the, in fact, like, if you go into a patient's room, you're removing them before you exit the patient's room. Yes. Because the point is not to spread the germs. And in this case, there's a lot of people, I mean, that you see in public um, misusing them. And, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, they're, they're maybe spreading the germs. Um, and, and even so, some have not been disposing of, disposing of them properly. I have heard which, that, yes. Which um, is unfortunate because you could, you're putting somebody else at risk. Uh, like, yes. So here okay. where, where I'm at, um, you know, there, there's definitely rules like um, you have to wear a mask when you go out. Uh, okay. Um, if you're pumping gas, if you're in a building, or if you're in the parking lot of a building, um, but if you're exercising, you don't. So it's not, it's not super strict. There's other areas that are maybe a little bit more strict. Um, we're getting cases on a regular basis, but not a big number. Like um, most of the population is is doing the stay home thing. Uh, we're definitely doing as much right. as we can. We're, yeah. we're only going out for essentials. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think if just more people do their part, um, we could definitely get through this and get through this faster. So it's not a, a horrible thing. It could be worse. It could, it could definitely be a lot worse. Um, yeah, it, it's nice to hear that things are slowing down. Um, I think I've heard like it, it could be a lot worse from a few people that I still keep in touch with across the country where they're at. So it's it's nice to hear that my fellow coworkers in different states are they're not overwhelmed. Right. That makes me feel better, and they all seem to be doing pretty good yeah. for what's going on. Well, a big thing you you mentioned your your family. You 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 come from a family of healthcare professionals. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, thank you for that. That's awesome. Uh, do you maybe want to talk a little bit about that? Like, uh, yeah. So when I was graduating high school right around the time my mom was in x-ray school oh. yeah so she was putting herself through school and she basically told me you can stay in my house if you go to college or you have to get out okay <laughs> <laughs> so she was very nice and she brought me to her clinical site at the time and let me shadow to see if it was something that i wanted to do and um i watched a couple floral cases and just kind of hung out on the floor and watched, watched them do what they did. And it seemed, I was like, yeah, I think I could do this. And so I ended up signing up and got into the school, I think the next, within the next six months and I was ready to go. And then from there, um, she actually went to more school to do MRI. So she now does MRI. Um, I then met my husband at the time in Arizona. He was, I believe in IR at the time when I was in CT and we met and then we started traveling together. And shortly after we started traveling, my sister went into nursing school. So she's a nurse. So we're just um, all in the medical field. <laughs> man, that's awesome. So there's definitely plenty to talk about around the table. Yeah, yeah there is. It's, it's <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice talking with people who don't get grossed out that easily. <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's nice. I love that. Um, my husband and I are in the same field, but different, which is right. also great about radiology. You can cross train into so many different fields. So when I come home venting or telling him that I had a problem or something went really well, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it, it, you know, even if somebody's interested in radiology, I, I don't think it's easy to explain exactly what it takes to be in the field. You know, would you agree? I, I agree. I feel like um, a couple of places I've been at, they have the high school students come through. Okay. I don't know if you guys have that there. Oh, it's, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's hard to explain. I feel like when they come through CT, this is just one little bit. And I know they're seeing all of it, right. but I don't know if they're just from the, I think the last time they were there was just like 15, 20 minutes that they saw. Right. Because they're being ushered around to different parts of the hospital. It's hard to even give them a glimpse and 
in 20 minutes of just one portion of radiology. Absolutely. Knowing the equipment and, and, and knowing the positioning and then knowing the pathologies, get rare cases every now and then, um, different situations. Um, there's a lot to learn. There's just so much to learn. And, and you know, uh, I don't think anybody at any point can know everything about radiology. Definitely um, not. Like I said, I, with each contract, I feel like I learned something new. Yeah. Um, I like to say I'm a seasoned tech, but I also, <laughs> like being new every time is just like, all right, I'm ready. I'm here to learn. What, what can you teach me? Absolutely. Man, are, are you seeing more um, like the DR? Are you seeing more digital uh, equipment? Um, so I'm seeing a lot. I relearned x-ray on a travel assignment. I went straight into CT okay. after I graduated. Cool. Um, so eight years later, I took an assignment that required me to do x-ray, which if you're cross training, don't let your basic x-ray go. Yeah. Man, that was, that was tough. Um, but yeah, I'm seeing a lot of DR now which is nice because if I ever have to do x-ray again, right. I know like most of the DR portables I've used now. So at this current assignment, I'm only doing CT, but I'm like, oh, I could use that if I needed to. Sure, absolutely. Um, but a lot of the CT scanners are, it's a lot of GE and Siemens. Right. Every once in a while I'll come across a Toshiba, but I mean, I think you can learn anything on an assignment, especially if you have people who are willing to teach you and, they usually want to teach you because they want to get you when they're working. I ran into uh, a Canon CT machine and it had the, the 3D and, and you can manipulate. And, um, you know, there's other CTs that do that too. Um, mm -hmm. It just looks like it's getting easier. Like you get so much information and the detail and, you know, the, I think the, the dosages are also going down. Probably. They're also going down. Yeah, it, it is. It is getting easier. Um, which makes it nice if I don't know a scanner, sure. I can walk into an assignment and at least button push my way through it. I know I hate <laughs> to button push in this field, but CT of the technology is just getting so good that basically you can, right. but it also, at least I know with GE, you can also kind of go back and it still lets you be hands-on. So, right. um, I it's been a minute since I've worked on a Siemens or a Toshiba, but I'm sure they're all that way. Like you can teach someone what they need to do to get a scan done. But if you really want to sit down and teach them like the ins and out of it, you still can do that. Even though the technology is just yeah. so fast. So like, so amazing. You, I think we're doing traumas in like less than five minutes, wow. like full bodies, yeah. like in and out they're done. It's so crazy. And, and has it become more routine, like, okay, trauma, CT, or, or do you still see trauma, x-ray, and then CT? Or um, I, see, I see both. I feel like um, C-spines and facial bones have kind of left x-ray and have gone the way of CT, which with the lower doses and how fast they are now makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, but I feel like at least in trauma situations, it's always at least a chest and a pelvis for x-ray. True. At least. And then whatever extremity work needs to be done that we may or may not do in CT afterwards anyway. Right. Yeah, CT is definitely um, one of those modalities that are that interesting. I mean, um, there's so many modalities to choose from. I mean, you say your husband's in uh, uh, interventional radiology, and then now he went to cath lab. Mm -hmm. Right, so different equipment, different procedures, uh, or another advantage of this field is, is, you know, you just never know where you're going to end up. Um, uh, so CT is is like just another one of those great modalities, you know, and necessary. Like, I mean, you know, it's the, the need for CTs, in my opinion, is increasing because yeah. the technology is getting better, the images mm -hmm. are getting better, the dosage is getting lower, um, mm -hmm. you know, so. Very excited to see what's in the near future. I mean, who knows? As we're speaking right now, there's maybe something newer or better. Um, oh, I'm sh I'm sure. I feel like the technology changes so much all the time. Um, any idea, like once everything goes back, where you would maybe be traveling to? Yeah. Um, we've always wanted to do Alaska. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm very picky though. I'm 
born and raised in Arizona, so I don't want to go during the winter because I <laughs> probably die. Um, New York's always been on the list. Um, really, like I said, we're open to anywhere. Yeah, it, just anywhere new. Um, we're very thankful and I think lucky to be here where we are right now uh, just because everything that is going on and from what I've heard it sounds like travel has definitely slowed down right now or is almost non-existent so I'm happy to be where we are and happy to be employed so we're going to hang out here until we figure out what's going on. Absolutely yeah even um, traveling to other cities some some cities have checkpoints you know and, and yeah um, you know so it's it is what it is for now um mm -hmm. and, and to say you're lucky i think um is an understatement because you work for this you, you put in the effort right so so we do. you know so it's it's i like to think of it more like a blessing uh you made all the right decisions you, you you came into this you did what you had to do for 15 years right um 15 years yeah <laughs> Right. So, so yeah, to say lucky, no, I, I think it's what, you know, you work for, you deserve. Um, how much longer do you see yourself in radiology? Is this something you... Uh, um, I've gone through phases where I feel like I'm very burned out. Um, and then I've gone through phases where I absolutely love it again. And then everything in between to like, this is okay, this is great, that just the whole spectrum of you know, a job. Um, I probably see myself retiring in radiology. I always, um, a good friend of mine once said, like, she's going to cross train into MAMO and that's going to be her retirement job. I like, I'd like to take that from her and say, I would like to do the same thing a little bit easier on the back. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so uh, I think that's one thing, like uh, equipment is great, but there's still work. They're, they're still transferring the patient or uh, positioning mm -hmm. the patient. Um, so that's one thing I think people kind of, um, uh, they, don't, they don't get that part of the field. Like we're not bun pushers. There's definitely a lot more behind it. And there that's is. one of the things. One mm -hmm. of the things. So it's a very hands-on, very physical. Very physical. Job. And you can have your days where it just, it, just, it does you know, catch up. It catch up. Oh, mammal. Mammal's a great field. Mammal's a great field. Um, I think the, the demand for mammography has increased, uh, in my personal opinion. Um, I think the technology is also getting better. I think the dosages are also decreasing. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, it definitely plays a huge part in saving um, lives as well, or prevention. It does. And I'd like to be a, a part of that and be on the, the front lines with that and be like, you know, if someone gets the good news, be a part of that person's story. I think that'd be great.